إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to Quran Made Easy This is your brother Abu Muhammad In the last lesson we learned how to recite Surah Al-Masad correctly Today inshallah we're going to learn how to recite Surah Al-Nasr correctly and remove some of the common mistakes that people make Now let's open our Quran to Surah Al-Nasr أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now the surah here starts with إذا جاء Now jim here It's articulated from the middle part of the tongue جاء جاء Which is similar to the English J And not the French J We don't say جاء إذا جاء جاء Nor do we make the jim closer to a dal إذا داء لا Like how some people say Should be جاء Like the English J جاء now we have the word جَاءَ Inside the word جَاءَ we have an alif We mentioned before the alif is one of the three letters of mad Alif, waw and ya Whenever we have these three letters Alif, waw and ya These three letters of mad Depending on where they are in the ayah Or what's, what's after them or what's before them They're going to affect the prolonging or stretching of other letters So we have here a word Inside the word there's an alif And then after that there's a hamza Whenever we have an alif and a hamza in the same word, then we're going to stretch the letter before the alif, in this situation the jim, to four or five counts. So, ja, ja. Now, this type of stretching is called mad wajib muttasil. Mad means stretching, wajib means we have to do at least four. So, four or five counts. So jaa we stretch it to four or five counts. Muttasil means connected. Basically, in the same word, the letter of mad, which is an alif in this situation, and the hamza, they're connected in the same word. Now, this mad, wajib muttasil, is similar to the previous mad that we did last time. Mad jaiz munfasil, except that jaiz munfasil, you can also do two in another mode of recitation. But wajib muttasil should, should be at least four, four or five. And also, where the letters of mad and in relationship to the hamza, in wajib muttasil, they're in the same word. But ja is munfasil in two separate words. So this type of mad is called mad wajib muttasil. So idha jaa, then we have the words nasrullahi. Now if we look at the name Allah here, lam in the name of Allah can sometimes be heavy and sometimes be light, depending on the letter that comes before the word Allah. If the letter that comes before the word Allah is a fatha or dhamma, then we're going to make the lam in the word of Allah heavy. If it's a kasra, we're going to make it light. So in this situation, the letter before the word Allah is a ra, and ra has a dhamma. So we're going to make the lam the word Allah heavy. Nasrullahi, nasrullahi, and not nasrullahi. So either jaa. Four or five counts. Nasrullahi. Then we have the word wal fatih. Now I'm going to read the whole ayah. I want you to listen to me carefully, and then you repeat after me. Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fatih. Now let's go to the second ayah. We have here the word waraita. Waraita. We have a hamza with a fatih and a ya sukun. Whenever we have a letter with a fatih. And next to it, there's a ya sukun. We have to be very careful by pronouncing the letter with a clear fatha. It's very common to do it in between fatha and kasra. In between fatha and kasra, like the word waraita, it's very common to hear waraita. A is in between fatha and a kasra in the middle. We don't want it in the middle. Went either clear fatha or clear kasra. So it's not wara a, but wara a. A, since it's a fatha, fatha makes an a sound. It should be wara a, waraita. وَرَأَيْتَ and not وَرَأَيْتَ So وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ We have a noon with a shadda So hold the noon, then let go وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ 
and automatically when we pronounce the noon o mim we'll have a sound coming from the nose which is called a ghunna then we have the word yadkhulun dal here has a sukun dal is one of the five letters of qalqala so when dal has an original sukun we make a bouncing echo sound so it's not yadkhulun yadkhulun but yadkhulun يدخلون. So ورأيت الناس يد يدخلون. Then we have the word في دين الله. Now the word Allah here, lam the word Allah here is going to be light. Why is this the case? Because the letter that comes before the word Allah, lam in the word Allah here. So letter, the letter that comes before the word Allah, noon has a kasra, so we pronounce the lam lightly. So ورأيت الناس يدخلون. في دين الله دين الله أن دين الله so ورأ ورأ أن ورأ so nothing between clear ورأيت الناس يد يدخلون في دين الله now we have the word أفواج فهي in the word أفواج is one of the letters that air flows with it when we pronounce it so if you put your hand in front of you and say أف Af, you notice air flows with it. But if I say afwaja, afwaja, very little to no air will flow with it. But we want the air to flow with it. So af, afwaja. Now, when we're stopping on a word, when we're reciting the Quran and stopping on a word, the second last letter of that word is a letter that has tanween with two fathas. So fathatan. Not kasratan, not dhammatan, but fathatan. Fathatan, an alif would always accompany fathatan. So if we, we, we find an alif at the end. And we're stopping on this word, then from the two fathas, we'll take one fatha off and we're going to straight that, that letter with a fatha to two counts. So in this particular example, afwajan, instead of jan, we'll make it ja, one fatha afwaja, and stretch it to two counts. Afwaja, afwaja. This particular stretching of this word is called mad iwad. Mad means stretching. Iwad means replacing or changing. So we're changing the two fathas to one fatha and stretching that to two counts. And when we do stretch it, afwaja, we have to be careful in not making a hamza sound at the end. Afwaja. To say afwaja, like uh, at the end, afwaja, is to add a hamza, which has to be avoided. It's afwaja, ja, and not ja, yeah? Afwaja. Now I'm going to read the whole ayah. I want you to listen to me carefully and then you repeat after me. وَرَأَيْتَ Not وَرَأَيْتَ Nothing in between. وَرَأَى وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Now you read it. Good. Now let's go to the next ayah. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ We have the word وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Ghayn here has a sukun. Ghayn is from the heavy letters. So we're going to make the ghayn in a heavy manner. We're going to pronounce the ghayn in a heavy manner. Wastagh. Wastaghfir. Fa in the ra. Ra here has a sukun. We mentioned before that ra is sometimes heavy, sometimes light. So when ra has a fatha, we, make, we pronounce ra in a heavy manner. When Ra has a kasra, we pronounce la, Ra in a light manner. What if Ra has a sukun? What do we do? Do we choose heavy and light according to ourselves? Or do we skip the letter? What do we do? We look at the letter before the Ra. If the letter before the Ra is a fatha or dhamma, then we're going to make Ra, we're going to pronounce Ra heavy, in a heavy manner. If the letter before the Ra is a kasra, then we're going to make the Ra light. So in this situation, Ra has a sukun, the letter before it is a fa with a kasra, so we're going to make the ra light. Wastaghfir, fir, fir, and not fir, don't make it heavy. Wastaghfir. Now, if you notice after the ha, when we're stopping, there's a little jim. Now, this little jim stands for jaiz. Jaiz means it's allowed. You can either stop and then continue or connect it without stopping, like this. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهِ Stopping. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Or, you can continue without stopping. 
فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا So the jinn is called ja'iz. Why is it called ja'iz allowed? Because the first part of the ayah and the second part of the ayah there's not a very strong connection to the meaning. There is a connection to them but not very strong. So here we can conclude here that the stopping signs are for the uh, meaning related. So we find inshallah next time we're going to learn that some of the stopping signs because the meaning is strong you find some stopping sign will tell you to, it's better to continue not to stop because the meaning is stronger. Other times you're, you're told some stopping signs, it's better to stop not continue. Other times if you stop, meaning will change. Other times if you continue, meaning will change. Inshallah we'll learn the rest inshallah later on. But remember the jinn means allowed to stop or to continue. Then we have the next part. Innahu, hold the noon, hold the noon, innahu. Uh, a nasalization sound will automatically come إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Hold the wall تَوَّابًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا تَوَّابًا is mad عوض two counts we stretch the bar to two counts now what I'm going to do is to read the whole surah what I want you to do is to listen to me carefully on how I pronounce the words because I'm going to I'm going to apply all the rules that we learned بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء four or five counts نصر الله heavy إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأى ورأى ورأيت الناس يد ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا أف it comes out أفواجا two counts at the end مدعي وض فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر غين هذي را light واستغفر you can stop or you can continue إنه كان توابا now this is the end of the lesson what did we learn today's lesson today we learned two different types of مد مد واجب متصل and مدعي وض Mad wajib mutasir just means when we have a word, inside the word is one of the letters of mad, and a hamza next to it, we're going to we're going to stretch or prolong the letter before the letter of mad to four or five count. Mad iwad just means when we're stopping on a word, the second last letter of that word is a letter that has two fathas. Fathatan, we're going to remove one of the fathas off and stretch that to two counts. We also learned that the little gene when we're stopping means allowed. So it's allowed to stop or it's, it's allowed to stop and then continue from the next word or it's, it's allowed to continue without stopping. If anyone has any questions related to today's lesson, please feel free to ask. Inshallah, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Please don't forget to take the short quiz to test yourselves what you've learned today. We've also prepared the PDF for all the notes for this lesson. And finally, please do subscribe, share and forward our videos to all your contacts. And remember the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever calls to any goodness will get the reward for the person who does that goodness. Jazakumullah khairan for watching. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.